hello friends so welcome to the today's session so my name is sai so i am working as a java tutor in the soft logic systems so today we are going to discuss about the the most important and frequently asked interview questions on object oriented programming okay so first of all we'll see the first question explain about object oriented programming language so what is meant by object oriented programming means so it is used to design a program based on a class and object so any object oriented programming so depends upon the class and object so just take one small example so here human so human is a class okay so how we can call the human so by using the human name okay so human name is an object so remaining all the body parts either where he is belongs to so where he is staying so that everything will comes under that human only so to design a program based on a class and object so that is a first question so what is object oriented programming means so to design a program based on a class and object so example so you can mention this example so class human so his name is an object so he is having some properties okay so we will move to the next question so what are all the concepts in the oops so if you go to any programming language so these are all comes under the oops concepts so what are all the concepts will come under the oops so polymorphism inheritance encapsulation object class and abstraction so these are all comes under the oops concept so oops concepts consist of class object encapsulation inheritance polymorphism and abstraction so these are all the concepts it will cover in the oops so they will ask what are all the oops concepts means so you can explain with this example okay so next we'll move to the next slide so now what is a constructor so explain constructor overloading in java so how we can explain so what is constructor so first of all constructor it is used for object initialization so object initialization means what so we can initialize the object so initialize means nothing but so we can store that particular object okay so next place our own value instead of planning a default value so instead of assigning a default values so whatever the required values for us so we can keep that values inside the constructor so what is the next point so it is a special member method so constructor is a special member method and constructor does not have return type so this is the explanation of the constructor or we can explain in another way also so what is constructor so constructor is a special data member function okay used for initialization of the object and constructor does not have any return type and here they are asking the particular question explain constructor overloading in java yes we can support for the constructor overloading in java so explanation so same method name sorry same constructor name with different parameters so that is called the constructor overloading so what is constructor overloading so same constructor name but the parameters of the different parameters so that is called the constructor overloading okay so next So next we are moving to the next question so explain polymorphism and types of the polymorphism so what is meant by polymorphism so polymorphism means so one to many so for example take myself so now i am telling a class so i behaves like a trainer so if i go to the bus so i have behaves like a passenger so if i am in a shopping mall so i behaves like a customer so if i go to my home so i behaves like a son only me performing the different different operations 
so this different different operations is nothing but so one to many so one person is going to perform the multiple operations so that is called the polymorphism so what are the types of the polymorphism so we are having the two types of polymorphism so one is compile time polymorphism another one is runtime polymorphism so compile time polymorphism means another name is nothing but overloading so compile time polymorphism is nothing but overloading so runtime polymorphism is nothing but overriding okay so just i will give you the definition so what is overloading and what is overriding so overloading means so same method name we are taking but our parameters are the different parameters so runtime polymorphism means so same method name with same parameters or we can take different parameters okay so that is called the overriding so we can explain in another way also so overloading concept so we can take within a class but overriding so we can take in multiple classes okay so this is about the polymorphism explanation so if you explain like this means so the interviewer will satisfy with your answer so just he will ask explain polymorphism so you can explain that so polymorphism stands for so one to many operations so we are having the two types of polymorphism so one is compile time polymorphism another one is runtime polymorphism so compile time polymorphism is nothing but overloading concept so runtime polymorphism is nothing but overriding concept so in this way so you can explain your answers for the polymorphism so we'll move to the next question so next question so what is the next question what is abstraction what is abstraction so abstraction means so hiding the internal details and display the functionality to user so what is abstraction so hiding the internal details and displaying the functionality to user so you will see some real time examples so daily whatever we are doing all that are the examples of the abstraction see example here i mention so abstraction example remote i mention so remote internally how the remote is manufactured we don't know but whenever if you click so the channel will come or not so hiding the internal details so i don't know whatever they represented inside the remote but if i press means whether my channel is coming or not so hiding the details so just the function will be shown to the user so this is one example of the abstraction so the next example of the abstraction is atm so atm we are going to withdraw the amount so now i enter the 1000 rupees so i got 1500 rupees note so to 200 rupees note and 100 rupees note but how that function is calculating internally we don't know finally if i enter withdrawal and my amount will come in so how internally it is processing we don't know so this is also one example of the abstraction so hiding the internal details and we can display the functionality to user so we can take another example car and engine so engine so it is inside the car so the user cannot see the engine but whenever we are running the car so the engine will start and it will start our procedure so like that so all real time examples of the abstraction so remote atm so car engine so these are all some examples so we can take our mobile phone is also example of the abstraction okay so this is the explanation of the abstraction so we can tell abstraction means hiding the internal details and it will display the functionality to user okay on how we can access the abstraction immediately they will raise the question means so we can tell so by using the abstract keyword so we can mention the abstraction okay so abstract keyword we can mention for both class as well as method okay so now the next question is so what is encapsulation what is encapsulation so encapsulation stands for process of the wrapping the code and data in a single unit 
so what is encapsulation so process of wrapping a code and data in a single unit so that means what so whatever the data like methods variables classes so this everything combinedly i am keeping within a class so that is called the encapsulated encapsulated means so totally covered so everything i am keeping within a single class see here i am displaying one tablet so inside the tablet so all the medicines how we are going to mix inside that capsule so here also all the data members method everything so we are keeping inside a class so that is called the encapsulation okay so how we can access the encapsulation means so by using the setter and getter method so setter means what so we can give the data so getter means what we can retrieve the data so this will call the example of the encapsulation okay so what is the advantage of using the encapsulation means so whatever the variables and methods we are taking so that we can take as an private modifiers so this is a one of the advantage of the encapsulation okay so these are all the some concepts of the hoops so remaining concepts so we'll see in the next video so follow this video on so practice this hoops concepts so some practical examples also i will show you in the further videos okay thank you for watching this video